So this is actually a video I've been wanting to make for quite a while. Basically, I want to show you guys five mods that are going to allow you to make your survival mode experience fun again. Right now, you're probably sitting there wanting to maybe start a new playthrough in Fallout 4 or maybe thinking about it, but there's kind of a hurdle when starting that new playthrough. And even just in general, survival mode by itself isn't the greatest thing in the world. It definitely has some aspects about it that leave a little bit to be desired. So with this video, I want to show you five mods again that I've been using over my survival playthrough and just found from time to time as experiencing the game that I think if you combine all these and start a new playthrough, and although yes, some of these will work with your existing playthrough, but largely they're meant to be started with a new playthrough, it'll actually make your survival mode experience a lot more fun and really just make the game as a whole a lot more enjoyable. These are mods that are meant to be pretty fundamental to the game. Yes, you could put on a bunch of weapon mods, things like Sim Settlements, the Pip Pad, all mods like that on top of those, but hopefully these will be kind of the fundamental, the mods that are going to be there to really just improve your experience. So starting off, we have a pretty integral mod to this, and that's going to be Start Me Up. If you guys are playing an additional playthrough of Fallout 4, pretty much anything that isn't just your first playthrough, I would recommend using this mod. Now, as you start a new game, you're going to have a ton of new options. You go through your normal character customization, but then from there, you could actually pick a bunch of different things. Your special stats, which you pretty much always could do, but then you also do have an option for traits now. There's going to be traits very similar to what was available in Fallout New Vegas. A lot of these do have their own pros and cons. Some of them are directly from Fallout New Vegas and basically this will be applied to your character throughout your entire playthrough. And a lot of them do have really good trade-offs, especially the custom ones. They're really interesting. It's like, well, that will actually make the way you play the game quite different. But from there is where I think this gets really interesting. You also do have an option to kind of pick your occupation. Basically, this is going to affect what kind of starting gear you choose. So if you're a hunter, you'll probably have some kind of rifle that does have a scope on it. If you're a scientist, you'll probably have a laser weapon, etc, etc. And you could also pick where you want to spawn on the map. You could just have Diamond City or Red Rocket as a traditional star or somewhere much farther and in the wild for a more challenging and difficult start. But now that you start in the middle of nowhere, you kind of have to worry about the supplies. Well, actually, in one of the latest updates to Start Me Up, that was a new option added in. So now you could actually choose to have a much more difficult start, maybe, if you really want that survival experience, or on the flip side, you could actually have much more equipment than usual. This will be a bunch of extra stim packs, some ammo, armor. So when you're first starting out, if you are in the middle of nowhere, you can survive on your own for at least a short while. And then finally, one of my favorite new features is you actually can pick which level level you want to spawn at. For me, this is again a huge feature. Spawning at level 5 or 10, I think, on a new playthrough is really just the most ideal. I'm picking level 25, obviously, for the sake of this video to make things even more fast. But otherwise, the first five levels of Fallout 4, after you've done them probably three or four times on different playthroughs you were testing out, do get really repetitive. Just being able to skip that to burn through some of those early quests that are kind of just rather tedious rather than fun, and really diversify yourself and get into your new character. Obviously, being at level 10 when you start out might not be for everyone, but fortunately, it's all hugely customizable with this mod and I think that's what's really going to make it so you kind of get a blank slate as you start out and you can choose what options you do want and don't want. So those are really just changing factors about Fallout 4 in general, but this is supposed to be how to make survival mode fun again. Well, survival options is going to be another integral mod. This is going to pretty much allow you to change every aspect of survival mode, toggling them off, on, making things a little bit easier or harder on yourself. So things like hunger, sleep, and thirst, or you could change how often this occurs if you have debuffs at certain levels. So maybe only when you're really dehydrated do you start getting debuffs. I think that one's actually really nice because when you're just kind of peckish or only need a little food or water, it's kind of annoying to get that carry weight debuff or health debuff. There's also a bunch of toggleable things like fast travel and all that, but really the reason I use this mod is to increase the damage. If you're playing on a new playthrough of survival, I would really recommend checking this out or giving it a try. Playing them three times damage is what I typically do. For this video, I was trying out four times damage, but even like 2.5 times or 2.75 times, you get really specific with this mod and basically what this is going to do is it's going to make combat just feel very different. Enemies will pretty much one shot you, but you'll almost one shot all enemies also. It's not going to be till the later level levels of the game where you have a good amount of armor and so do your enemies that you don't insta kill people. But again, what that does is it really changes the combat. Cover is very important. You really have to play around your environments or try and figure out a tactical advantage against your enemies because you really are equals. I mean, hopefully you're smarter than the AI, but at the same time, they can one shot you and you can one shot them. But also by proxy, playing on this mode will result in a lot of death. So enabling quick save and auto save, I think are really important also, which can be done through survival options. I personally don't like having to backtrack and 
and redo things. I just think that's tedious. I only have so many hours a day to actually play Fallout 4, so having to die and then go all the way back to your settlement or your bed is just not for me. Maybe it is for you, but again, that's the awesome and beauty of this mod. It's all totally customizable. And even in the latest version of survival options, now you could actually just assign it to a hotkey. So if you want F4 to be saved and F5 to be auto save, that's what you could do. And as you probably saw, they also have all those options. So you could customize like when you enter a new location, it'll auto save after a certain amount of minutes passing, it'll auto save things like that, which are just really nice to have because you'll forget to save and then die. And then you don't want to go too far back. But with those options in mind, if you're playing through Fallout 4 survival mode, you're going to be walking a lot, a little too much for me. And although yes, survival options does have the ability to turn fast travel back on, I feel like that's also too much in the other direction. I want a middle ground, something that makes it so I don't have to walk everywhere because the first time you walk from Diamond City to Castle and then have to go back, you'll realize it is pretty horrible. But at the same time, don't want to just be able to fast travel between the two because you want to get to experience the Commonwealth. Well, the mod for you is going to be Journey. Basically, what this mod's going to allow you to do is well, there's actually a few different options, but the one I play on is the realistic version. And basically as you set up supply lines between settlements, so let's say from Diamond City to Castle, you actually can now use that to fast travel. It honestly makes a lot of sense, even from a realism perspective. If you have this caravan going from point A to point B and not getting raided or anything because, well, your supplies are at your other settlement, it would make sense for you to actually have to go there also. The reason I really like this is because you're still gonna have to walk a lot. Settlements aren't that closely bunched together. And even further to actually set up supply lines, you'll often have to walk all the way to that settlement at least once anyway and maybe even once or twice while you wait for settlers to actually spawn there so you can use them for supply lines. There's also an option to travel with caravans like those roaming caravans that'll take you to wherever they're going for a cost of 75 caps or they'll actually just transport your luggage if you want that also. That's cool but honestly playing through the game I never found myself using that and it was really just the supply line feature that I really liked about this mod. So now we have high damage and less walking, but still some walking. Let's give you something to do while you're walking from point A to point B. The mod you're gonna wanna use here is NPCs Travel. What this is gonna do is basically add in little patrols or kind of walking groups of enemies or friendlies for some of the major factions in Fallout 4 and actually for just kind of miscellaneous things. There'll be adventurers, hunters, mercenaries added in here. So as you see a hunter walking down on the road, you could actually trade with him, but the real part that you're gonna notice is these enemies. You could find patrols of super mutants of varying size, sometimes it'll be two sometimes it'll be five or six just walking down the road and as you're also walking down the road obviously conflicts will evolve and erupt occasionally you'll actually even find conflicts between two other sets of npcs so maybe the brotherhood of steel and the super mutants will pass each other and you'll just kind of stumble upon them fighting this is a really cool mod i like this one over things like war of the commonwealth because it isn't like all-out war in the commonwealth it's almost a little bit too difficult and too extreme this is a nice middle ground it honestly feels like something that should have been in the game by default you'll often find these guys around their existing settlement and oftentimes on some of the major roadways. So to and from Diamond City, you'll encounter a lot of these while on some of the outskirts in like these swampy areas, you won't encounter nearly as many of these instances. And like many of these others, this is totally customizable. You could choose how often you want them to spawn, if you want them to spawn at all. And it really is a cool mod. It's gonna spice up the game. It's gonna create some really tense situations as you encounter some enemies while maybe you were low on health or low on supplies trying to get back to one of your settlements. Plus it also just kind of got boring walking all the time. So this gives you some interesting variable that could occur as you're walking from point A to point B. When you first saw power armor in the Fallout 4 trailer E3 conference, you probably thought, oh my god, that is like a tank, like a literal walking tank. Unfortunately, as you actually play through the game, you're going to quickly realize this is not the reality. Power armor is abundant. You find it on tons of enemies. You can get it very easily yourself. I mean, in the intro of the game, you get almost a full set of power armor. Well, I don't really like that. And some assembly required is going to change that about the game. It's going to do a few things. Make power armor way less common. Most of the times you find power armor with this mod, you're only going to find a piece of two. And even beyond that, you also have to probably fight a few enemies to actually get to that piece. So this kind of creates a scenario where you're going to have to get all of these pieces from all over the map and combine them into a full set. You'll probably have some mix match with some Raider pieces, T-45 pieces, etc. But at the same time, it makes power armor way more powerful. It is a very strong piece now and you honestly feel like a tank. Even playing on survival mode with my extreme damage overhauls, you don't really just insta-die now. You can actually take and absorb shots from enemies with this mod installed. And I think it just makes power armor play a lot more fun. 
fun. It's probably not something you'll use all the time, but in those needy situations or when you know you're going to have to go to a very dangerous location, you can bring it with you and feel much more protected. Even beyond that, it has a few other changes. Raider Power Armor is just flat out going to be the most abundant. The only way you can get T60 though is by joining the Brother to Steal. I personally really like that. I just think it is kind of a cool aspect and an extra perk for joining that faction. And even further, the super coveted and sought after X01 is actually only going to have one set scattered around the Commonwealth. So by that I mean there's going to be one headpiece in one location, then the torso somewhere else, etc, etc. This really is cool. I mean, it really makes power armor just feel way more powerful. It's also going to make power armor enemies way more powerful. Using armor piercing ammo and things like that are going to be way more necessary and you're actually going to have to consciously do that. And rather than just being an afterthought, another armor that you use and get into, it's actually going to be something a lot more formidable and fun to acquire and actually use. So yeah, that's the five mods that I think are going to make survival mode more fun. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you think this is cool? Do you guys like this list? Do you want to see more in the future? I definitely know of a few other mods like Agony and some other stuff that I think would spice things up even further. And also, after watching this video, are you guys going to go play through this? Are you going to download these mods and start a new game? I always wonder that after making these videos, like, are you actually going to do anything or is it just entertaining to watch these videos? Either way, I'm happy because you're watching. With that being said, I thank you all for watching again and I hope to see you all next time. Later.